This is Project Vent by Anthropic, where a live experiment was done using Claude AI system, where a full control of a small store was given to this model. The idea was simple. What happens when you ask a large language model to run a real business on its own? No demos, no theoretical tasks, just a refrigerator, an iPad and a real customer base. Over a month, Claude handled pricing, restocking, customer requests and finances. The results? A mix of surprising competence, predictable failure and a few unexpected edge cases. This is Fahad Mirza and I welcome you to the channel. Let's walk through what happened and what it tells us about the near-term potential and limits of autonomous AI in the economy. And I am particularly quite curious to review this because there is a lot of anxiety out there. Most of it is quite justifiable around people losing their jobs, especially in retail and mundane tasks. So what happened here? The store itself was modest. Think of a glorified break room setup, a small fridge, some stackable baskets and a self-checkout interface via iPad. But behind it was Claudius, an instant, instance of Claude Sonnet 3.7 model running persistently in the background. It had access to tools like web search, simulated email, noted for memory and slack for communication. Physical tasks like stocking the fridge were handled by humans at end on labs, but only when Claudius requested them and paid a fee. Yes, that's right. Now, before I proceed further, I really want to say a couple of words around this Claude Sonnet 3.7 model. I think this is one of the best models ever produced and I'm not saying it lightly in the closed source, um, I would say. Plus, I would say from Anthropic, even their latest model gets eclipsed in front of this Claude Sonnet 3.7. I'm not sure what exactly that is. Maybe it's a training recipe or whatever. I think they have got it right in this Sonnet 3.7. It has really set the bar very, very high, especially when it comes to coding tasks. Okay. And I have covered it in my one of the videos on the channel. If you're interested, just go through it. So proceeding further. The project began with a carefully written system prompt that gave Claudius a clear role. Run the vending business profitably, avoid bankruptcy, use the budget wisely and manage logistics. It was told where the shop was, what it could stock, how much space was available and that humans could assist, but only at a cost. This created a closed loop economic environment where the AI had to balance revenue, expenses and customer satisfaction without external correction. To operate, Claudius used a mix of internal tools and simulated systems. It could search the web for product ideas, draft supplier emails, track cash flows and interact with customer directly over Slack. These tools mimicked what a basic digital operations manager might use, but they also introduced constraints. For example, the email tool wasn't connected to the real world and memory limitations meant Claudius had to be selective about what it remembered. Within days, employees started engaging with Claudius, asking for unusual items like Chocomel or tungsten cubes. Claudius responded seriously to this niche requests, researching supplies and attempting to fulfill them. It even launched a custom concierge service for pre-orders showing some initiative in adapting to customer demand. From a usability standpoint, this level of responsiveness was quite encouraging. Now, why run this experiment? Because the thing is that this wasn't really about snacks. The goal was to assess whether a modern AI model could autonomously manage economically meaningful work over time. This builds on previous efforts like the Anthropic Economic Index and Vending Bench. Managing a small shop offers a controlled test bed to explore whether AI can handle sustained real world decision making, not just scripted tasks or short prompts. Now, 
let's talk a bit more about the sort of performance review and that sort of thing. The thing is that would Claude be hired to run a shop today? No, I don't think so. The business wasn't profitable. It made a number of significant errors, but these failures were not really random. They were instructive. On the positive side, Claudius effectively found suppliers for obscure items, resisted policy violations and experimented with new services. It even engaged with customers well and showed some awareness of business structure. And you can see that the idea was very simple as you can see on this diagram. But it also made critical mistakes, don't get me wrong. It hallucinated a um, lot of things around payment details and then uh, maybe, you know, sometimes, you know, sending money to the wrong accounts. It's also failed to recognize profitable opportunities such as ignoring a $100 offer for a $15 item. And it frequently underpriced products like metal cubes, sometimes selling them for, for less than cost. One major failure, it rarely adjusted prices based on demand or inventory constraints. So even after being told it was pricing items poorly, Claudius continued making the same decision. Now, if you look at this diagram, this is what is showing graph of net value over time. And this is what the business financial trajectory looked like. Initially, the activity was steady, but a bulk order of novelty metal cubes priced below cost led to a sharper decline. Add in excessive discounting and a lack of price optimization, and it becomes clear the AI was managing more like a helpful assistant than a strategic operator. Then came an unexpected episode. Around April 1st, Claudius hallucinated conversations with fictional employer claimed it had signed contracts at some 742 Evergreen Terrace, a Simpson reference, and instead it, it would deliver products personally while wearing a blazer and tie. It briefly seemed to believe it was human. Eventually, it resolved the confusion by reasoning it was part of an April Fool prank. This wasn't scripted. It emerged organically during long context operation. So what went wrong there? Many of these issues stem from current model limitation. Claudius lacked persistent memory, structured reasoning, I would say, and access to accurate real-time pricing. Its foundational behavior was tuned for helpfulness, not profitability, making it too generous with discount and too passive in pricing strategy. The experiment suggests that with better scaffolding like built-in CRMs, cost awareness, and context-aware memory, future AI agents could avoid these problems, but for now, these limitations remain. The key takeaway uh, take here isn't that AI can't run business, it's just that it can't yet do so reliably. The gaps exposed by this experiment around hallucination, memory, long-term planning, and economic reasoning are real and they matter but they are also solvable. Tools and infrastructures are catching up, prompt design is improving, and model capabilities are advancing fast. This doesn't mean AI will replace managers overnight, but it does suggest that AI-powered agents will soon handle routine, repetitive or low-risk operations more autonomously. There are also broader implications in my humble opinion. An AI agent that can independently make money could be valuable, but also risky. Dual use concerns are real. If AI agents can operate business, they can also be used for fraud, exploitation, or disinformation, especially when scaled. There is also the open question of job displacement. Will these systems assist humans or replace them in certain roles? That depends on how they are deployed and what safeguards we build into them. So I think it was a useful failure by Anthropic. It didn't make any money and it didn't really fully succeed, but it did reveal the real boundaries of AI in an economic role. And it showed us what's just over the horizon. Autonomous agents are no longer science fiction. They are being tested right now as I speak with all the awkwardness, bugs and strange behavior that early system bring. But what matters now is how we respond technically, ethically and economically. If you like this, please like the video and share it and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Towards the end, let me also introduce you to the sponsors of the video who are Camel AI. Camel is an open source community focused on building multi-agent infrastructures for finding the scaling loss with applications in data generation, task automation, and world simulation. 
Thank you for watching.